Hello and welcome to Crime Divers. I'm Laura. And I'm Jill. And welcome to today's episode. Hello everybody, welcome to today's Laura Sword. It is a Laura Sword. So Laura, where in the world are we? Well, I think we're actually somewhere where maybe we haven't been before. Oh really we are. So we're in Costa Rica. Oh, Costa Rica. So I don't think we've been there. No, I don't think so. so. We're, we're travelling a bit today. Okay. Spreading our wings and, and going somewhere new. So what is the title of your episode? The title is The Murder of Maria Luisa Sedano. Okay, so do you want to dive in? Let's dive in. So Maria Luisa Sedano was born on the 29th of May 1977 in La Fortuna de San Carlos, Costa Rica. That's Are you sure bit, now? <laughs> that is a bit of a mouthful, but yes, that is where she was born. She was the youngest of five children and she graduated from high school in 1994. Maria had always dreamed of becoming the first member of her family to receive a university diploma. She was very determined to su- succeed in life and, you know, she just wanted to, you know, do something really good. So she mm-hmm. decided to study medicine. All right. Good for her. Absolutely. So she graduated from the medical faculty at the university in San Jose and she received master's degrees in anesthesiology and rehabilitation and surgical medicine. So she became quite a well-known specialist in that field of medicine. Right. Good for her, though. Absolutely. She does, honestly. She did sound good. Um, As she had devoted her life to building a successful career, she didn't really have time for much of a personal life. Mm -hmm. Um, She did date a fellow doctor whilst she was studying at uni. However, their relationship didn't last long. Um, And in February 2020, they broke up, which actually caused her some depression. Um, And also, if you remember rightly, covid was around at this time yeah you know so the pandemic was spreading around the world and you know with the world being restricted it just made it worse for her she yeah. just you know she it's just... bad enough having to go through a breakup but at that time with the you know that uncertainty of what was happening with the covid we've been in you know well exactly quarantine and whatnot and... yeah so i think she was just feeling pretty you know down and depressed let's say you know the relationship wasn't working out covid was happening i mean especially for a doctor i'm assuming that would have been quite a stressful oh, yeah. time as well uh-huh um for her so she wanted to take a break like from all her problems so she did actually get um a weekend away so she decided to spend that weekend in a quiet place on the coast so she booked a room at a place called so i'm assuming this like obviously in port um, in port rico i'm called port rico port port rico not port rico costa rica um i'm assuming maybe their restrictions weren't quite as strict as us because she was able to book um a room at a place called le mansion inn Oh and yeah, because like over here, everything yeah, was all shut down. I suppose exactly, yeah. But she was she was able to do that. So, um, her room, so she booked, basically booked this hotel room. She went off, obviously off on her weekend away. So her room was on the ground floor, um, and she actually had two entrances to her room. Right. So one entrance was from the hotel lobby, and the second allowed access to the courtyard. Mm-hmm. So Maria had chosen this room because she actually had a dog as well, so she took right. her dog with her on this. Oh, that's uh, weekend. good that she was allowed to take yeah, her dog. Exactly. So she checked into the room on Saturday, the eighteenth of July, twenty twenty, and she was supposed to leave the hotel on the Monday. So everything, you know, went as planned. She checked in at her room on the eighteenth. The next day, she had a good time on the beach with her dog. You know, she just went for a stroll oh, and enjoyed herself. You know, sounds nice. Yes. Um, and then she, you know, she walked through the local streets. She took photos, which she shared with her loved ones, because obviously she was, you know, showing them where she'd been, as you do when you're away for a weekend. Yeah. Um. And then in the evening, she ordered a bottle of wine, two glasses, and some water to her room. So you know that was that was it. And then you say two glasses of wine. Yeah, two gla- no two glasses. She ordered a bottle of wine, two glasses. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm confused. Why well, she ordered two find, glasses? You'll find out later. You'll find out later. <laughs> um. So, yeah, she ordered, had ordered that to her room. So, obviously, on the Monday, the 20th, she was um, going to go for... Well, she was due to go for breakfast. Uh-huh. Um, and, but she didn't, she didn't come down for the breakfast because the breakfast was about 8 o'clock, I think, so it was like a scheduled breakfast. But, you know, she didn't yeah. turn up for this breakfast. But the hotel staff, you know, they just thought she decided to sleep in, you know, obviously yeah. didn't think much of it, um, you know, didn't bother her. But, you know, obviously when a few more hours passed and, you know, she still hadn't appeared, the staff 
you know, became worried, obviously, because mm-hmm. I think she was due, due to check out as well, so she obviously hadn't checked out. They were probably getting annoyed as well, to be honest, because they wanted to get in and get the room clean. Well, exactly, because and... the maid, it was actually the maid that yeah. went to the door, you know, and started knocking on the door, but, you know, Maria, you know, didn't answer the door, but the maid could hear the dog barking inside. Mm. So, of course, she was like, oh, right, okay. That's, you know, quite alarming. Why is nobody answering the door? But the dog's there. So, obviously... You would have thought, you know, even if Maria had been asleep, maybe the dog's barking would have woke her up. But, mm-hmm. you know, she still never came and answered answered the door. Um, So, like, as mentioned earlier, I said that there was two entrances, obviously, to her room. So the maid went to the entrance from the courtyard because she'd obviously been knocking at the door at the yeah. lobby but couldn't mm-hmm. get an answer. So she decided to walk round to the courtyard door. And they kept calling out her name because, obviously, they must have known her name as well. But all they could hear was the restless barking of the of the dog. So no one had actually like the door was unlocked, so the maid decided to go in. Um but upon entering they um the maid obviously found Maria. Um they found her body wrapped in sheets on the bed. Wrapped in sheets? Yeah, oh. on the bed. So of course the maid called the emergency services and asked for an ambulance and the police. But unfortunately by the time they arrived, like she was already dead. Yeah, yeah it was too it was too late to save her. Um and it was, you know, it was likely that she'd been dead for quite a few hours before she was Aww. discovered. Um so after after all after all the hotel um obviously was quite empty because of the virus. So I like, before I said like obviously she could still go to this place, but it was like unusually quiet because there wasn't a lot of people, yeah. you know, going. So they probably still had restrictions as well, like I probably only maybe yeah. only um so many rooms that they were allowed to yeah, exactly. Um, so I mean, what's the word? or maybe I mean I don't know if I've been a doctor. Maybe there was a special, you know, ability but to go to a uh, hotel maybe. or something for a break. I don't. I don't know the circumstances, but it certainly wasn't as busy and bustling as yeah. as, a, as a hotel would normally be, um, because of the COVID. Um. So obviously there was always like you know there's still there was still plenty of staff around, but none of them had saw or heard anything you know at all like you know had, about what had happened to her like so you know there'd been no disturbances there'd been yeah been, they hadn't no, heard yeah, anything yeah, unusual yeah nobody had been alarmed about anything that in that night so obviously nobody had realised that something had obviously happened, um. So, um, oh, sorry. So Louise, Louise uh, Maria Louise's room, she had a, an electronic lock. So the security, you know, they could actually check who everybody that, you know, the, the key. Yeah. So like everybody had a key, like they could tell whose they'd key able, had, had been used. Yeah. And they'd be able to see, would they be able to see timings as well? What time? It was yeah, yeah, up? exactly. Yeah, they would be able to check all that. Um. So obviously Maria herself had a had a key, but the staff also had like, you know, duplicate keys, obviously, because they need to access yeah, rooms course. for cleaning and stuff like that. Um, so of course, like I say, it was possible to find out who entered the room and at what time. The police obviously could check the database, but they found that no one except the woman herself, you know, Maria, had entered it. So the staff obviously thought, well, if no one had actually entered it, it must have been either the, she had let somebody in. Yeah. Um, or I think, you know, that because she had two entrances, I don't think the back door to the courtyard had a key to get in. Oh. So it could be that they entered through that door as well, because I think it was just like a sliding door. Uh, right, you know, so yeah. like, you know, those sort of French doors. That so I take it there wouldn't be access for anybody else to get to it. You could only access it from the room. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, so then, so then that's how I say the investigators assumed that, you know, the person who'd done it maybe entered through that door at the back rather than the front door. Mm-hmm. Another version that they thought was, let's say, maybe... That just, you know, that's just contradicted want... it, actually. Yeah. Because if there wasn't any access... Oh, no, 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 no. They must have been able to access from like the courtyard. You must like so she had a room at the front from the lobby that was controlled by a key, uh-huh. and then she had a room at the back that you could access from the courtyard. So some, if somebody was in the courtyard, they could access the room if it was open. So it was just like sliding doors. Yeah, but how would they get to that? That surely, for security reasons, that that door would have to lock if there was if you were able to get to it from somewhere else. Well, I mean, maybe the door, the door must have been open, like it must have been unlocked. Because I mean, remember when, when the maid went in the morning, the door was unlocked. Yeah, no, but what you what what it sounds like you're saying I could be picking it up wrong is that there it doesn't have a lock on it. It's just a sliding door. So oh no, I think it has a lock on it. I just think it was maybe unlocked. So if either she had opened it to let somebody in, right, 
And if that person's left, they actually they haven't locked it from the outside because maybe they can't. Ah, just because you agreed with me when I said that you could only access it from oh, the room. Oh, sorry, I must, so have, you I must, must have misheard right. what you yeah. said. Yeah, just a little bit of confusion there. Sorry. <laughs> Easily done to yes. when it comes to us. Well, yeah, I was just going to say that when it comes to us, yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, so the police think that the person had entered through the courtyard door. So the, because there's the, no way of checking. Yeah, so there's right. no way of checking that one because the key card thing had only been yeah. used by Maria Louise herself. Right. There had been no staff or with a key card entered yeah. that one during the times that they were obviously looking at. So they think that they must have come from the back. Sorry. Okay, back right. on track. Back on track, <laughs> sorry. No, um, wasn't it you? It was just... Yeah, I know, easy confusion <laughs> to be... It's, it's, it's not difficult. Um, so, yeah, so like I said, but then like I said they thought that maybe she'd let, let the person inside. So the, the police actually almost immediately ruled out the possibility that the um, motive for the crime was theft because she had valuables, jewellery and money and they had been left and untouched been in taken. the room. That nothing had been taken. So it meant that the criminal obviously had other motives or yeah. other reasons why they were... Well, obviously they are now ended up killing her. Mm-hmm. So when the criminologist examined um, Maria's body, they realised um, basically what the criminal had wanted to get. Um, they, I think, you know, it was like a, it was a sexually motivated one uh-huh. because the woman was naked. Um, she was obviously fighting for her life. Um, there was obviously traces of DNA under her fingernails. There were actually bite marks on her face and her uh. chest. Um, you know, there was like, she had bruises from heavy blows on her face and traces of str- strangulation on her neck. Um, <laughs> That's just the dog being daft, sorry. Yeah, the reports also say that there were injuries in her genital area. You know, so it was a sexually right. motivated yeah. attack, basically is what the police were decided that that's what the evidence was showing them. Um, the police saw distinct footprints on the floor next to the bed. Um... Obviously, their phone was lying next to her. They were, said there were two glasses. There was an open bottle of wine and the water on the table. Um, and basically, after all the forensics were done, the cause of her death was from head and neck injuries. Um, so experts believed that they would be able to get DNA samples from the bites on her body. But however, after she was examined, um, they were surprised because... The bites on her chest and her cheek actually contained her saliva, but obviously, uh. a person can't bite their own cheek. Uh huh. So it I'm meant confused. that the person who killed her had actually contaminated the bites on on her body, and um, with her own saliva to mask their DNA. Oh. So basically, they had like they'd obviously bitten her, and that would have left their own DNA, but they were obviously and then they've got her saliva, saliva and... basically rubbed it into her bite marks okay. so that that contaminated it so i was like i've never heard of that before well, i've never heard of that either but i mean that's obviously quite a clever yeah i mean clever horrendous thing. well but horrendous obviously for her and like but like quite clever, clever for them yeah that, to do that so yeah um so another strange thing that the police said was that the attacker had washed maria's body and um, before wrapping it in the sheet and putting it on the bed and basically, they think that maybe that's what the the police thought. Maybe that's what the person was doing, trying to destroy the evidence, like yeah. of them. Like that's why they obviously took the time because they obviously had, they obviously clearly didn't feel rushed, you know. So yeah, well, nobody thought, knew she was there as a hotel room. Well, exactly. Nobody's going to disturb them. So they obviously yeah. thought they had time to think about what they were doing and mm-hmm. actually, like you know, they've taken the time to wash her body, like wrap it up, you know, get rid of potentially their DNA and stuff like that. So crazy how somebody can be so. Because I mean, they've got to be calm in that situation. You yeah, think. I was gonna say that it's like calm and um, I don't know, I don't know what the word. I don't know. I know what you mean. Yeah, but I don't know how to put it into words. It's like because a lot of the time when you think about sort of murder, mm-hmm. you think maybe like frenzied, like you know, somebody murders somebody and then they're like, right, I need to get the hell out of here. Yeah, but yeah. the fact that to stick around and to cover their tracks is very. Callous? Yeah. Is callous? No. Yeah. I don't know what the word is. I know. I, 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 it's, just, it's just very... I don't know. Calculated? No? Calculated, maybe. Maybe that's what I, I was know, thinking. But, but just, yes. Um, but just they obviously feel confident in themselves that they've got the time to actually do that. Like, mm. one, because they think, well, that's going to help me get away with it, potentially. So cocky as well. Cocky, yeah. yeah. That I can actually, you know, I can do All that. All these words because we see... I know they do, don't they? <laughs> cool, <laughs> calm, collected. Cocky, callous... <laughs> 
conniving. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the list is endless. But basically, to sum it up, this person clearly had I... the confidence and mm. the, the, you know, I say, I say the cockiness to... Or even just like the... Just the, take their time. Yeah, just exactly. like, oh, you know. But it's true. I mean, like, if you're in a hotel room at night time, mm-hmm. you're not going to get disturbed. I mean, the only time you would get disturbed in a hotel room is maybe during the day if mm-hmm. the maids come in to clean the rooms. Yes, well, exactly, yeah. But any other time, time. you're not going to get no, disturbed. No, exactly. So you've got not, all the time in the world. And you've got your do not disturb signs that you can yeah, all put up exactly. as well if you really wanted to have peace and quiet. So, I mean, I... So it's quite scary, actually, well, what can go on in a hotel well, room. Yeah, absolutely. So, obviously, to some extent, as you know, the person had succeeded in, in basically covering their tracks because mm. this was obviously quite challenging for the police because, you know, at the moment, you know, the, the evidence, yes, you could see she was murdered, but there was no simple way of going, right, well, there's that person's DNA, we can track them down kind of thing. Well, that's it. I mean, in 2020, yeah. you would think, because, you know, with so many other cases, DNA... Check, you know, yeah. DNA, sorted, there you go, there's your murderer, so... Well, exactly. So, of course, you know, the police are, you know, after doing this investigation, you know, our poor family, I mean, you know, it was totally unmanageable for them. You know, our parents, they were like over 80 years old, so they were like quite of a good age and, you know, quite traumatic for them. You know, it was just the thought of like the fact that she was obviously tortured before her death. You know, um, you know, our friends, our family, colleagues, you know, they just couldn't believe that this kind, cheerful, you know, soul was just no longer with them and, and how brutally she was obviously you know, murdered. Like, yeah. they just couldn't couldn't get their heads around it. Oh, it's bad enough that somebody dies. Exactly. And she, and I say she was a well-known, you know, I said before, she was like a well-known, um, you know, doctor in her field. So, you know, the, the, the news quickly spread across, um, you know, Costa Rica about, about this death, about, you know, so the police, of course, they wanted to, to really find the person quickly um, so that, of course, they could get justice for her and her family and, you know, find out what happened to, the, to her. Mm-hmm. So, of course, the police, you know, I said they started their investigation by checking everyone who worked and lived at the hotel at the same time as Maria Luisa, because that's what, you know, my immediate thought was, well, if this is a hotel that's quiet because of COVID, then you got to look at the staff first, I would mm-hmm. say, because I don't know, I don't know how many other guests were actually there at the time. I mean, it just said that there wasn't the usual amount, so I don't know if there was a lot or not. Um, you don't have CCTV? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, That was actually actually my next line was, although there was CCTV cameras at the hotel, the police couldn't obtain the recordings because guess what? All the cameras weren't working. Oh my God. You know, that... that... Why does that always seem to happen? Exactly, exactly. Um, What's the point in having them? Mm -hmm. And as I actually just... Sorry, I obviously have written down there saying that the hotel was practically empty due to the situation Mm. with COVID-19. So... The lack of guests, it, as it, it did affect the number of staff working, so there wasn't, like, the usual, you know, amount that they would probably be on a normal yeah. basis, but there was still staff around, of course. Yeah. Um. So Maria Louisa had actually sent a message to her friend. You know, so she, she'd obviously noted that, basically, because she actually sent a message to her friend saying that the same person who served her coffee also were performing other duties at the hotel. So the staff, because they were obviously scaled back, they were doing, they were doing their things. Jobs. So she'd sent a message to her friend, basically noting that fact that, oh, there's not as many staff around because basically the same person's doing, you know, different things for me. Whereas mm-hmm. normally in a hotel, you'd probably have your, you know, you've got your receptionist, you've got your waiter, you've got your maid or whatever. But these people must have been performing multiple duties yeah. at the time. So the... Um, but despite that, she did also say that she was having a great time there. So, you know, she was enjoying herself. Uh-huh. So the owner of the hotel was a Dutch business businessman called Harry Bodan. He was born in The Hague in 1951. In, in, in 1951. Um, and in the 1970s, he moved to the United States and started working at Hilton Hotels. Mm-hmm. Um, at some point, he rose to the position of hotel manager obviously for Hilton and he then be- he also became a director of the National Press Club in Washington in the early 1980s so officially it was like a journalist club but it was also a place where politicians and presidents from all over the world would meet each other um, and, ger- and, and, um, and journalists so over time he gained like loads of connections and he bought real estate in many countries so one of his possessions was this hotel in Costa Rica that mm-hmm. he bought but he actually lived there, so he obviously decided he wanted to live there. And he lived there with his young husband, um, called Yard Danilo. I see, that's the names. I've told you those names I might, might not get right. 
Okay. Yeah, but Danilo Obando. Okay. So that was his husband. So there was another guest of the hotel who was 38-year-old Teodoro Herrera Martinez. Um, and he was close with the hotel owners. Uh-huh. A hotel owner, sorry. He was close with Harry Bodan. And according to Martinez, he... Um, He was like he was working at the hotel, um, and Bodan had invited him basically to come. Sorry, so he was working at a different hotel. Sorry, and and he was invited to come and work at this hotel, but he was then later fired due to a lack of customers, maybe because of the pandemic. I don't. I'm not sure if that's why there was a lack. Mm. Of, um, but he allowed Martinez to basically live there in one of his rooms for free. So even though he'd fired him, he was still living there for free because right. they were still quite you know good friends and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. And and to be fair, Martin is he still kind of a lot of the time carried out, you know, personal things like, you know, for Bodan at the at the hotel. So even though he fired him, he still got him to do like things like hotel maintenance and stuff like that. So they were obviously like quite friendly. Uh-huh. Um so Teodoro Martinez, he actually became the first suspect for the police after an official police dog led investigators to the door of his room. Um and when they obviously came across him, they actually found that he had scratches on his back and his cheeks, which they believed were probably left by Ma- Ma- uh, Maria because she yeah. said she had fought for her life a bit. So when they yeah. saw that... They yeah, because you said there was DNA under yeah. her fingernails, So they put two and two you? together that maybe like that's why he had the scratches. Um. So the police also found traces of blood on his shoes, which indicated his involvement in the crime. So that he was actually arrested. Um, and he was actually sent to um prison for six months like literally straight away after that like they arrested him on the first day after the crime so it was the day after he was arrested and he was actually sent to prison for six months really during the so he was obviously on remand i guess like whilst mm. they were investigating but he was literally i don't know if costa rica maybe they've got different ways of dealing well, with things yeah. but because he was arrested he was literally in prison um so obviously the you know the authorities they were trying to come you know get the investigation you know sorted so that they could obviously you know progress it further so they were trying to establish all the details of the crime and take you know take the case to court um so after so obviously they also arrested a second suspect which turned out to be a 36 year old man called luis carlos miranda um and again he was a close friend of the hotel owner harry mm-hmm. bodan so he um he also lived at the hotel as well so um so he they he they basically obviously I mean the police was a bit cagey with some of their their um like the details of the crime at the time so I did obviously struggle to find a few bits about it but it did become clear that experts thought that Luis Carlos Miranda was the one who had bitten Maria uh-huh. they thought that that his, his it was his bite marks um so like Martinez he was put into prison for six months as well oh they just put but. How? I mean, I, I said, I mean, if they were obviously arrested, so I guess they were just like, I said, because you know something But they could have been completely innocent. Well, there's been people on remand and being innocent, aren't they? Because people have been arrested I've, you've, over the world, over the world. But that's when you. they're charged with something, isn't it? Well, again, maybe they could, could, I mean, they might have been charged. I just, I didn't, didn't see the words specifically that they'd been charged. So maybe they were charged with it and that was the right. on remand, but they were just thrown out of prison for six months. Okay. Um, so yeah, so at the beginning of the investigation, the police's assumptions, like their thoughts on this, was that Maria Luisa might have invited someone to her room, because they made the conclusion based on the fact that she had ordered two glasses. Remember how I said she'd ordered two <laughs> well, glasses? Well, yeah, we figured that out. <laughs> right but, to the start. Uh, but 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 after interviewing her family and friends, investigators learned that actually she often took two glasses to her room Why? or two glasses to anywhere because when she drank wine. She used the second one for a water, for w- drinking water. So it was quite normal. I thought she had, her, she had water, didn't Why? But she had, she had a glass for the water. So she obviously must have got a bottle of water, but she obviously had the gla- right. glass for it as well. So the okay. one glass was for the wine, one glass... Or the, that's what the, the family said, yeah. so she would quite often do so that. she did that, right. Whereas to us, yeah, that looked like yeah. she was maybe inviting someone course, to the house. Of course, yeah. Because you suppose probably nine times out of ten that is the case, but apparently that's what she did. Right. So eventually, um, the police actually arrested the hotel owner, Harry Bodan. Um, Did he get put in jail as well? <laughs> well <laughs> um, as, as 
they also discovered that there was a, one of the bites that actually matched his dental <laughs> cast. <laughs> Sorry, the dog would just had her had her tongue in my ear. <laughs> Thanks for that paper. Yeah, see so yeah, we need to train our bear. She's a pain in the butt. <laughs> She's still just a puppy. Right, come on. I know. Hopefully she will <laughs> learn to sit nicely. She does sit nicely at home. This is the thing, she's like really calm at home, but here she's just not. She just molested me. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so yeah, so they they um so all three of them, as I said, you know, all three that were arrested, so there was Harry Bodan, there was Martinez, and there was Miranda. So they all, of course, denied any invo- involvement of her death to start with. Um, but how Harry Bodan, he was, he was under house arrest due to his health problems, so he didn't actually get thrown in prison okay. like the other two. So he was under house arrest because um, he had obviously health issues. Um, there was a report saying that he had Parkinson's disease and he was battling with cancer as well. Right. So... The police also questioned um, Harry Bodan's husband, um, but he denied that Harry could have been involved in Maria Luisa's death, describing in detail the day and night when the crime occurred, like basically what happened, like what they'd been up to. He said that he'd got up early to help Harry Bodan get in a bath and get dressed. Um, but then he said they'd say that he went, like obviously the day was fine, it just went as normal, and then he went to sleep at 12 p.m., um and then he woke up um you know and went to his office as normal like so he didn't think that anything had been unusual that day so like, it couldn't it couldn't be my husband because that's that um so can bother there yeah <laughs> sorry she's lost her place as usual um <laughs> Yeah, so according to... All right, so yeah, so as I said, so yeah, so according to him, they obviously went to sleep. um, But he, there was a phone call um, at 1am that morning. So Harry had obviously answered the call. And a security guard had, was basically calling him to inform him that that Martinez had stolen some beer from the hotel bar and, and was wandering the corridors. So, you know... Harry Bodan's husband helped him up, you know, because obviously they decided to go and find Martis because they were good friends with him, mm-hmm. remember? So they were like, oh my God, like, why is he stolen some beer? So they basically, apparently that's what they were doing. They got up to go and find where, where he'd got to. Um, So they found him in shorts and with no shirt on and he had a beer in his hand. So Harry Bodan took the beer from his hands and threw it on the floor and he told Martinez to go to bed um and basically think about where he would live next saying that he didn't want to see him in a hotel anymore so it must have been like right. a final straw for him he was like you know what you don't know me you've obviously stole from me yeah you know what you can just piss off basically well you didn't want somebody wandering about the hotel with a top off and with a beard in their hand that doesn't look very professional right, exactly. does it <laughs> so according to uh, then that's they did that and then they basically went back to their room for the night um but like I said to you before, I mean, I know there wasn't a lot of staff at the time, but I suppose it was quite strange that nobody was alerted to the fact that some... I mean, I don't, I don't really know what the layout of this hotel was, because to me it doesn't sound like your typical high-rise block of... You mm. know, hotel. It's obviously like maybe more like a... You know, like obviously you could... You know, there's also obviously a courtyard that you could get into your room for. Maybe like more apartment like, style. Yeah, like more sort of thing, rather than actual like, you know, loads of like levels or floors yeah. of, of things. So, I mean, it must be quite a... Especially, I mean, maybe Costa Rica, I, I'm not I'm familiar with their hotels, but I can just imagine them not being like massive hotels either. Right, you know, yeah. Maybe like sort of like smaller sort of places, but... You know, no idea. <laughs> I don't, I don't, obviously, I don't know. I mean, maybe I should have, I should have had a look and actually had a look at the layout of it, but I didn't. <laughs> um... So, yeah, so, so as I said, you know, Harry, he was still under house arrest, so he had to wear an ankle monitor and he wasn't allowed to leave the hotel or contact any of the other suspects. Um, but at the end of 2021, he actually, he actually sold the hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think it was partly to do with, um, like, his health was obviously deteriorating anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and he actually needed to pay for the services of a lawyer to obviously fight his case for being accused of this murder. So, um... The new hotel owners that he did sell it to, they didn't allow him to stay there because remember how he was living there as well. So he actually had to move. Um, so he gave the prosecutor's office as his new address, but 
um, they actually marked him as a suspect who could flee the country. So they actually lifted his house arrest and they, they actually did place him in prison in March 2022 because he obviously couldn't provide a stable address. Right. And they saw him as a flight risk. So he did end up in prison, okay. eventually. Um, so it's just still, they've still not been, like, officially... I mean, obviously, like, this investigation is still going on. So, mm. you know, they've, they've not even been to court and these people, like, say they are in prison. Mm. So, I mean, like I say, it must be just their rules. I don't know. Um... But, you know, he moaned and they said that he didn't like the care provided. He said that he called it substandard, claiming that his human rights had been violated. You know. Well, if he needs looking after, if he's got cancer and Parkinson's. Well, exactly. I and mean, we've got a pandemic, you know. I'm, mm. I mean, and without sounding <laughs> terrible, I don't know what Costa Rica's care no, is like over there i mean i don't know whether you know to us that you know like we obviously you know we're lucky we have the nhs here and stuff like that so i don't know what kind of care system they've got so you know maybe no to him it wasn't adequate but you know anyway so the trial started in september 2022 with these three men on trial um so of course by then you know there was obviously more details of the case you know being released and the the prosecutor's office they believed that Teodoro Martinez was the main culprit. So he was the one that stole the beer. The yeah, this guy. They believed that he was the main culprit. He was the one that had scratches on his body, and his DNA was actually under uh, Maria's fingernails, oh. which makes sense because he's got the scratches. So yeah. it was his DNA um, that was found under there. Um, and in addition, they found seminal fluid at the crime scene, which also belonged to Martinez. So. Um, they actually, yeah. So basically, they believed he was the main culprit. So, <laughs> sorry, I've got dog. Dog on me. <laughs> She's a bit yeah. She's like actually climbing on me. All right. Okay. Yeah, just... I think you're. I think you're banned from future recordings of podcasts, <laughs> Piper, because you can't behave yourself, and you're a pain in the butt. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so Harry, Harry, he actually appeared in court in a wheelchair, accompanied by his lawyer, who filed a petition to have his client again transferred to house arrest due to his health problems, but the court denied that request. So, you know, they were still trying to get him back to house arrest, but they mm. were right now. So the prosecution, they presented this version of what they believed happened. So they believe that on the night of the July 19th to the 20th, 23, that... Um, the suspects entered Maria Luisa's room and attacked her. They entered through the sliding glass door, knowing that no one would see it in the database, because remember, you can't get there with a key card. Um, and because there was almost nobody else in the hotel, um, they obviously, you know, no one, like, you know, they think that Maria Luisa probably did scream for help, but because there was basically nobody around, like, nobody, nobody heard, heard them. them. Um, but they also thought that if it wasn't that, if she didn't alert anybody, then they did conclude that maybe she could have been asleep as well. When they first initially entered her room, they thought maybe she was asleep. Oh, God. Um, and that they maybe probably covered her mouth with something so that no one would hear anything. So that theory was the, the more likely theory. Right. Um. So I said, Harry, Bodan and Miranda, they left their teeth prints on her body. And presumably they, they basically think that they two held her down while Martinez brought his sadistic fantasies to life. So the two That's of them were down while he was obviously basically attacking her, sexually attacking her. And When do you her. have that conversation with two other people to say, mm. this is what I'm going to do, so are you going to help me? Well, that's the thing, because I mean, obviously, like, the men were all friendly with each other. So I don't know what obviously has brought them to think it was a great idea to then pounce on this poor, innocent woman... That's what I'm like, wait, how do you sort of bring up that? I mean, like, mm -hmm. I just... Exactly. To find three people that would actually do that. Mm -hmm. That's it just, awful. It is, it's awful. And they, obviously, I mean, they think, you know, it's likely that she totally fought for her life. Mm. Um, but of course, the men, they would have been far too strong. Mm. Um, and she was beaten severely. She was then strangled, um, actually breaking her cervical vertebrae. That's, That's how horrendous. And and I and as I said to you before, you know, all three men, now that we know that they obviously lived and owned worked in the hotel, mm. they knew they had enough time to cover their tracks, which is why 
they've obviously, you know, washed her body, moved her to her bed, covered her with a sheet, smeared the bite marks, you know, with her own saliva. Um, so the experts couldn't find any foreign DNA. That is awful. That's mm -hmm. just... Yeah. But of course, the each, you know, each defendant's lawyer, they had a different strategy on, on it. So Bodan's defence argued that their client had underwent knee surgery shortly before M Maria Louise's death and he had difficulty walking, let alone mm. participating in the crime. So they were like, how could he possibly do that? Um... And they, they actually did have to postpone the trial at one point because um ex there was an ex there was an expert witness who was supposed to testify about the teeth marks on her body, but she had um like the, she was supposed to come and do that but she'd actually left the country, so. Um, Miranda's lawyer actually invited a Spanish orthodontist from Madrid, to come and testify instead for some okay. reason. Um, and the woman obviously herself said that teeth marks on the skin weren't sufficient evidence and her testimony was supposed to have lasted two days but she actually returned to Spain a day later because she felt totally intimidated by the prosecutor's office um, so I just don't know why she was even brought in to actually it was, it was almost like she was just brought in to, to fill an expert gap which mm. obviously she clearly wasn't that comfortable with because she yeah. was intimidated and yes yeah, she may have been an orthodontist which obviously would make her qualified to talk about teeth marks yeah of course but, you know, she was just, it was almost like she was just sort of drafted in. Mm. Um, so it didn't really work out. Um, so according, so anyway, according to the conclusion um, reached by the Ministry of Justice, um, the crime basically could not have been committed by only one person. They insisted that all three men were involved in the case. Good. Um, But the um the lawyers, you know, they criticised the, the like basically the examination conducted by the judicial I can't say that word judicial 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 no I can't even say the word. Um, it's but anyway, they they basically they pointed to inconsistencies that should have been the basis for um Miranda's acquittal. I have no idea what happened there. For God's sake, I've mucked this up majorly again. Anyway, we'll skip that bit. So yeah, um, so so everyone learned that Maria Luisa's blood was on the inside and outside of Martinez's shoes. So it also meant that he could have been barefoot at the time of the crime and then stained his feet later when he put his feet in his like put his feet in his shoes because they found blood in his shoes. Mm -hmm. Um, so they think that he was probably barefoot at the time and obviously like put his feet in into his shoes so that was obviously another compelling evidence against him and they also found phone on his phone on his sorry, <laughs> blood on his phone and his watch um so again you know he was pretty much like that fuck. yeah because <laughs> he was the one that you know that so you know he had the intimate contact he had like a lot of his dna was found on her he had the scratches so yeah he was basically the yeah so it's pretty um, yeah. compelling like exactly. he's compelling that he yeah. was that yeah he was the one that had done it um they obviously asked Bodon why the security cameras weren't weren't working in this hotel and as i said um apparently well, they now we'll know because yeah. he knew what they were doing yeah but his excuse was that they didn't work because of funding problems like that he obviously couldn't afford to get them fixed um which i think you know because no, he probably said, just switched them off exactly because he said that they had about five or six low quality cameras and gradually i, I think they all broke down and just you know, never got fixed. But he said that maintenance dealt with those sorts of problems, so he wasn't really aware at the time. Okay, whatever. Um, but like I said, there was no other evidence other than the bite marks on um, Maria Louise's body um, to prove that Harry Bodon and Luis Carlos Miranda's involvement in the crime. So therefore, in the end, it all came down to whether the dental prints can be considered irrefutable evidence. So while here in Miranda's case, the judge made several cl clarifications, including pointing out that the dental evidence is, um, you know, it could, it could basically, including pointing out that the dental evidence is that that is the match of the teeth pattern with bite marks on the victim's body could not be considered because no, no one read the accused man his rights before taking a sample. So obviously they all had to give teeth samples. Mm. 
for to match the thing, but they're basically saying that they, that they couldn't use that evidence because the man wasn't read his rights for oh, taking a sample. Which goodness sake! Again, it just you know it just sounds ridiculous. Really. It's, well, I get it. Like you should be read your rights, but why wasn't he read his rights? Mm-hmm. Like that's you know that's the law. Yeah. So anyway, in April two thousand twenty three, the court found Th- Teodoro Martinez guilty of taking Maria Luisa Sedino's life, and he was sentenced to fifty years in prison. Mm. The court acquitted Harry Bodan and Luis Carlos Miranda due to doubt about their guilt because they, apart from these teeth marks, which obviously they weren't allowing that to be really used in evidence, yeah. they couldn't convict them, um, which obviously is terrible. But but fair enough. I mean, if they, you know, if they can't, if they can't, they can't. Like, yeah, if, they, if the evidence isn't there, then... Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, the story didn't end there. And it was recent as October 2023... The Costa Rican Court of Appeal ruled, ruled to review the case against Bodan and his two co- co-defendants with new judges. As, as evidence, um, the Costa Rican Prosecutor's Office used the alleged teeth marks that, again, they weren't allowed to originally use, but they were allowed to use them this time on appeal. Okay. Um, the, the Prosecutor's Office wanted to try to convince the other judges of the authenticity of the teeth marks as evidence. Um. And the decision of the Court of Appeal didn't actually come as a surprise as Bodan, given how the investigation by the co- prosecutor's office had failed and how many inconsistencies in this case. Um, so by this point, he had actually um, left Costa Rica because he actually now lives in the Netherlands. So interestingly, even if the court in Costa Rica decides to detain him, he basically has nothing to fear because there is no extradition treaty between the two countries and he's like I'm not going back to Costa Rica oh so of course if, not even if they did decide to sort of yeah. open him and convict him they, is... they can't actually get him there to serve any kind of sentence oh that's um, so annoying exactly so he did actually do an interview with Dutch journalists um, and he said that given his terrible experience with the Costa Rican legal system and the fact that he paid a high price in the form of almost three years in prison because he did actually spend some time in prison because yeah. originally he got yeah. he was under house arrest then they threw him in prison. Mm-hmm. Um, he has said it is not in his, his interest to go back. There are too many policies. They are guided by public opinion. The country has an outdated legal system. There is corruption and it's, it's mass media is at the level of a banana republic. I can't take any more risks at my age and with my illnesses. Thus, you know, like, he, I, he basically said he would not return. So, so really, the case can't really draw to an end. I mean, there's, like, part justice, because obviously one guy has been convicted and mm. sent to prison for 50 years. Yes, they wanted to try and reopen it and reconvict, including Harry Bodan, but because he's no longer there and they can't get him back there, he re- will refuse to go back. And, mm. and uh, you know, so there's poor... So, I mean, I think that all three of them were involved. Like, I think they all... Well, yeah, I mean, definitely sounds like I'm convinced that all three of them yeah, were involved. Yeah, they all had a part to play. I, mean, I do worry about the Harry guy, because uh, he, like... I did wonder about him just because when you were talking about his husband, have, like, helping him have a bath. Well, exactly. And, like, and how I thought, mobile was he? Yeah, how mobile was he? And... But I think it was down to the teeth marks that that's where he came into play, because they say that, because obviously he was given... Um, you know, they they matched his teeth marks on her body, mm. so that's obviously the evidence that they had that said that he was involved. But yeah, if you look at it from an ability with his illnesses, his mobility, yeah. it does sound like how would he manage to? Not saying sh- that he didn't. Yeah, but... like how would he manage to have the strength to actually? Well, that's do that what as I was well? wondering. So I mean, I think you know the guy, um, Martin is. I'm pretty sure he's hundred percent the one responsible, guilty. Yeah, attacking definitely. her, you know, killing her. Obviously, the Miranda, I think, you know, he, yes, he's had his part to play as well by the restraining, you know, mm-hmm. bite mark and stuff. But I do have the question mark over Harry Bodan. I mean, I'm not, I don't know if he's completely innocent, but it, it does sound a bit. But I mean, I th- obviously, we're never going to know because even if, even if the Costa Rican system, legal system, finds him guilty. He's, never nothing, gonna, he's not going to serve justice for it. Yeah, there's nothing they can, be, they, they they can do about they it. Can't, they can't bring him to the country. They yeah. can't extradite him there to, to serve a sentence. That may, I mean, yes, they could hand a sentence to him, but he doesn't have to go and serve it. So, mm. so and I think the thing is, to me, I, I don't even understand why the attack happened. It seemed like a needless 
it was like almost like these men took advantage of the fact that you know we were going through covid maybe they saw an opportunity of whatever fantasies and sick things that they had and there was just this woman by herself the wrong place at the wrong time like i don't think she, you know it was just a random that's awful attack. whatever the case was it doesn't it doesn't matter what the the reason was or anything like that it was horrendous that poor woman mm-hmm. she just wanted to get away for a couple of days just to chill out and yeah exactly because i say she was you know she'd went through a breakup you know she was also a very skilled you know in the in the world of medicine you know, it would have been a hard time for the pandemic for everybody, especially, you know, those involved in those scenarios. So a break like that would have been something that she would have been, like, grateful and desperate to have. And yeah. it turned out to obviously end her life, sadly. I don't know. It's bloody awful, as they all are. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you to everybody for listening, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. If you would like to follow us on social media, we are on Twitter and Instagram, which is crime underscore divers underscore pod. We are also on TikTok, YouTube and Facebook, which is Crime Divers Podcast. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can email us on crime underscore divers underscore pod at outlook.com. And if you would like to support the show, uh, we have Buy Me A Coffee, so that's buymeacoffee.com slash crime divers and you can make a one-off donation and we also have patreon which is patreon.com slash crime divers we have three tiers which are a pound three pound and five pound and you get your uh, bonus content early access to episodes ad free episodes and obviously that will be in your own currency whichever country you live in and if you haven't already please don't forget to subscribe rate and review